Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to the Her Story Collaborative. My name is Jen Buck, and I'm your host here in the collab. Now, you know I'm all about advocating, activating, and amplifying high-performing women, and that's what the Her Story Collaborative is all about, trailblazing women who are changing their little corner of the world. Now, my next guest is Carmen Swick. She's been an author and writer since 2008 and is a member of the Society of Children's Books, Writers, and Illustrators. Carmen has won awards on her book series, Patchland Adventures, and along with being an award-winning author, she volunteers for a nonprofit organization, the Foundation Fighting Blindness, where she held the position as the president of the Denver chapter for the past 11 years. Carmen was the chair for the Blind Taste of the Rockies, which is an annual fundraiser to raise awareness and funds for treatment and to help find a cure for blindness, all the while attending schools and libraries and giving presentations and workshops and doing book signings. So this is such an honor. Welcome to the collab, Carmen. Hi, Jen. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so thankful to be here too. So just excited to sit here with this time with you to collab. Yay. I'm so glad. You know what? I am so inspired by you because not only are you tapping into that creativity, but you're also tapping into that wonderful philanthropic side that I think all of us, you know, need to be in, involved in. And I think with like today's sort of rat race mentality, you've got to make money, you've got to, you know, like slay the day and get out there and do the business thing. Like you're still staying so true to what I believe the heart wants, which is to be creative and to help others. And you've somehow married those two beautifully in what you're doing. Thank you, Jen, so much. I, you know, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing. And I think during these, uh, you know, uncertain times and what's going on, this is actually therapeutic because I know what I'm doing. I'm bringing joy, you know, to so many children. Yes. So I get excited to do this and, um, yeah, actually, I have a series of three books that are out right now. Patchland Adventures. This is uh, book one, Fishing with Grandpa. There's book two, Camping at Mimi's Ranch. Book three, Pirate's Adventure. And the latest title last year, 2020, was Chomper by Bearded Dragon. I love it. I love it. So let's back up here. So I want to know. How in the world did you get involved or inspired to write children's books? I just think it's so incredible. I was inspired by my son, Preston. He was born legally blind in one eye. And after one of the visits from the doctor, I was pretty emotional because I asked her, I said, so is he kind of legally blind in that left eye? And she said, not, not kind of, he is. And I thought to myself, oh, gee, so he had to patch his stronger eye in order to force his weaker eye to work. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, I would notice him feeling self-conscious, hiding behind my legs. He's four years old. And, you know, the kids are curious. They would say, you think you're a pirate of, free? you know, just so much, a lot of stares. And I went, you know, if he's having this many struggles, he can't be the only child having this struggle. Yeah. So I thought I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and I'm going to dive into doing some research. And two years later, I wrote the series. I found a wonderful editor and I, 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 I still continue to write because I'm still, you know, I was very encouraged and to see the satisfaction in all the kids faces and that they could be that character and know that they can do anything they want to do. And therefore, that's something that just developed. Yeah. I bet you have heard from a lot of moms and kids over time, you know, talking about how this has impacted them. What's the feedback you've gotten from doing such, such a, a conscious and aware book series? Mm -hmm. Yes. So basically... I even just received a letter, an email from an 18 year old young lady who's in school. And she said to me, she said, you know, reading your story and reading these books, because she found it from a write up. She said, I wish I had these when I was a young child because she was bullied. She wasn't understood at that time. And so she had these crying emojis and she says, 
still to this time, she's crazy about these books and she thanks me for writing these books and brought these books into schools so the teachers could read them to the children to bring awareness why a child might be wearing an eye patch. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's, a, there, there's several reasons. So uh, there could be, you know, uh, cancer, there could be cataracts, there could be my son, which is neurological with his amblyopia. Mm-hmm. So there's, you know, many different reasons. So also when reading the books to the children and getting the feedback from the parents saying, thank you. You know, my child doesn't patch. However, he does wear glasses or he does this or he, and he has an understanding now. And so do we. So yeah. they were, you know, very grateful and thankful and say, Hey, no matter what your challenge is, these books let you know, you can have fun and do anything you want to do. That is awesome. I just love it. And it's also something that you go into schools to read to children, right? You go yes. into these associations. And so how do the kids react when they're, when they're listening to the stories? <laughs> Depending on the age. Sure. So they love it. They have a lot of questions. They'll ask, they'll say, well, does he still wear an eye patch? And, um, you know, because they go to, in these stories, they go to patch land at night. So basically at night, they can do anything they want to do. They even fly an airplane, see? Oh. Even the airplane has eye patches. So it makes it a lot of fun for the children. Yes. And they ask all these different questions. How does he go to patch land? And, you know, can I have a patch? Can I make a patch? And it just, it just really educates these children and shows also empathy. And also it shows unique friendships with all different animals because children connect with animals. Mm -hmm. And it also helps on the bullion side too. So you get to cover a lot of areas in that spectrum. And also I go to libraries. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't able to go to the libraries this year indoors. However, went to the parks and made sure I was able to read him the, all the books. So very cool. You're making a difference, which is what it's all about, right? It is. Absolutely. It is. Wow. I'd love to hear what your son thinks. <laughs> uh, he is now 20. Yeah. And he actually at first was a little embarrassed when, though, when he saw the reaction of the other children in such a positive note. Yeah. He was, he was very encouraged to get himself out of his, you know, bubble yeah. And this child was playing football, basketball, lacrosse. Uh, he raced in motocross. So we just made sure just no matter what you do, just keep, you know, him seeing me get out of my comfort zone, that that wasn't something that was on my radar as a writer. Yeah. And um, he saw my struggles. He would walk into my office and see my struggles. And, you know, mom's doing this. Mom's doing this for me. Yeah. And so many other children out there. Yeah. So he's got to be proud as a man now, you know, to he actually see. did write a little note in school when they said, who's your hero? And he said, my mom, oh, <laughs> there it is. Oh my God. That was just, I still have that because that was very touching that, you Absolutely. know, I was trying to do something for him. And in return, he yeah. gave me a bigger gift. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So you said something that piqued my interest. You said that writing was never on your radar. You didn't nope. think that you would do any writing, really? No, no, no not at all. I, I did, you know, my mom, when she passed away, I would write poetry just to help me. It helped, it was, like I said, writing is therapeutic. Mm-hmm. And I just kept writing and writing through the pain. I eventually just put it all away, put it in the folder and put it away. Didn't touch it for years. Mm-hmm. And then my son was born and had these, you know, um, eye issues and it just fired back up in me. And it was just, and now it's a passion. If I don't write for a while, Jen, I, I'm like, Hey, I miss this. I want to get back to it. So yeah. yeah, And I'm excited because I have another book coming. So I was able just to branch off and continue to write, but send, you know, still the positive messages and continue to do that. And to give back with my books and my writings. Right, right. So you have another book coming. Mm -hmm. What's that one? Hockey the Duck. 
So I don't have it out yet, but I do some very, very unique that I think is unique to us, my illustrator, my creative partner and I. I write a, a bio, character bio for each character. So I I really refer a lot to ch uh, animals. You'll see them all. I mean, there's Pocky is the duck. It's a little girl on the farm. There's two pigs called Lollipop and Pickle. <laughs> Uh, the cows are Pedro and Patsy and the goats that are a big part of this is Eli and Moto. Mm -hmm. So it just shows, you know, the unique bond that they have, even though it's a duck, they do everything together. Yeah. So it just, it shows that. And I also did them for Chomper, my bearded dragon as well. So those are bookmarks that you give with the book mm -hmm. so that people have the backstory and bio. Okay, yes. Prior to clever. reading, they can connect. And it sets it up for a great story. They can already be engaged and they want to get pulled into that story. That is so clever. Oh, mm -hmm. I love it. So as a speaker and author myself, mm -hmm. I think that I'm asked, it's probably the second most popular question I'm asked, which is, how do I write a book? How do I get you know published? How do I get my manuscript out there, whatever it is. And so I think there are a lot of people, of course, in the world, but my audience tends to be primarily women. A lot of women who have a story, they have an inspiration, they have that, that burning fire in their belly to be published. And what would you say to women who have this kind of desire? Oh my gosh. <laughs> to be honest with you, when you said about the publishing and this and that, the hardest part is actually not the story in you. It's actually getting started. Mm. Just start, just start, start writing and don't worry about the editing and the formalities will come later. Yeah. What's yeah. in your heart. And when you write from your heart, I don't, your story is important. Somebody wants to hear your story. Yes. Absolutely. Get it done. Yes. Um, find an editor. Most definitely find an editor. Mm -hmm. a great editor at that and someone that fits with you. And if it's with children's book, make sure that that illustrator does as well. I mean, I, I absolutely love my illustrator. We speak on a weekly basis. This is how we work together. And, and you know what? We make each other accountable too. Yeah. to stay on our deadline. Sure. So, and we, we speak about the characters and how wacky I come up with certain characters yes. and their names and you know what they're going to wear. But absolutely, you have something in you. And let me tell you, these women, there's so many trailblazers out there. Their yeah. stories need to be heard. The absolutely. multicasters, the, the feminists, the what we do in this world, yes. it needs to be told. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I think that women are always playing by the rules and they feel like I have to have the whole book done or outlined and I have to then have a publisher and then I have to have some kind of, you know, plan in place for my PR. I have to have it all done. And I constantly tell women, just get it out there. Go to Kindle Direct Publishing, just get it out, follow an outline, have it in one place, have, you know, that connection to getting it out on Kindle or Amazon Direct Publishing. If that's what you want to do, just do it. You know, mm -hmm. all the... All the ducks will eventually fall into place, yes. right? Or in a row. And I really think that that's something that women need to hear because we've always followed the rules. We've always taken action once everything is in place. And there are so many stories that need to be heard. There are so many nuggets of wisdom just waiting to be acted upon by others who learned from that woman, right? Yes. And so I love that answer because that's that's right in line with what I say, you know, just yes. get it out there. We need to learn from you, you know. Absolutely. Everybody's story is important. Yeah. Very. Like Absolutely. you said, you know, like I said, the formalities come later, like you said, too, depending on the genre and what direction you want to go. And there's, as you know, women are always willing to help women. I, I will help anybody on my journey, what I've learned on my journey, mm -hmm. as well as I know there's other women there too. That's what we're here for. We're here yeah. to help each other out, not yeah. compete with each other because right. everybody wants to hear your story. They might want to hear somebody else's story. There's, there's enough stories to go around. So yeah. no competing, just help each other out and support. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. I constantly tell women, so you and I are right in the same pocket age wise. And I am constantly telling women that when I was coming up in business, 
it wasn't this big sort of girl gang that I see now, this collaborative girl gang where women will do whatever it takes to help one another. It was more segregated. It was more competitive. We were more separated. We were Mm -hmm. in a, in a culture that said women can't get along women (sighs) fight. Right. And this younger generation has changed all of that. This millennial uh, generation has said, we're all about collaboration. We don't want to compete. We want to pool our resources and do it together. And I love seeing my peers as yes. you, right? Who were like, yes, this yes. is what we've wanted forever. You know, yes. it was just that culturally everyone said we couldn't do it. And yet <laughs> we all wanted it too, you know, and right. I love this, what I'm seeing right now. I love yes. this. Yes. I, my daughter's, you know, that age. And let me tell you, they're constantly helping support each other and lifting yes. each other up in business or, or motherhood or whatever it is that they might be doing. Yes. So yes. And um, getting involved out in the community, as we know, that's very important to me mm-hmm. and this to use. And that's something that I feel that we need to do. Yeah. And um, I can know you're really active in the associations that you work with. You've been a chapter president for 11 years. You are doing some projects in the immediate future. Do you want to talk about those? Sure. Okay. So I no longer am the president of the Denver chapter for the Foundation Fight and Blindness. However, just a different platform, but still involved. As a matter of fact, tomorrow is the Denver's Vision Walk, and they've already raised 126000 Their goal is 185000 so they can still get involved if they want to. I mean, obviously, you don't have to walk, but online donations at fightblindness.org. So they're a big part of still, you know... um, finding the cure, you know, for blindness and um, just seeing, I wanted to get involved while I was writing books. I fell into this. I went into one of their symposiums and um, spoke to the medical chair afterwards and, you know, just gave him some of my, shared some of my thoughts and uh, marketing thoughts. And as I was getting ready to leave, he said, you know, you're the light in their darkness. And I went, oh, okay. So how do you, away from that so I didn't um obviously so I continue to um help you know do my part as you read the bio on that and I'm hoping with all the new research cutting edge clinical trials that someday might turn on the tv the internet whatever it is and say blindness has been cured Mm. that would be Amazing. And then also I did um, collaborate with another nonprofit. It's for pediatric oncology cancer for Mm. different hospitals. It's called Love Smiles. And it's just darling. So what she did, she actually has an app that she developed and the different authors, uh, they will download, just say I'm reading my book, just as you and I are sitting here, I record myself reading. Uh These children during their infusion times, they get to escape the harsh realities by picking an author and read during that time. And then they also, coming up in November, they do where um, they, they put decorations on a Christmas tree that's been donated to them. And then at the end, what I wanna do is I wanna do a book drive for that during the holiday season as well. And in February on their give back, uh, because the ladies um, that put this nonprofit together, she has a daughter that obviously has cancer and what that's one of the reasons she started this nonprofit. Her daughter has um, a blastoma and she's um, gonna be two. So in February is her birthday. Yes, neuroblastoma. And anyways, on the drive, I want to do a drive where all the kids do all their decorations, regardless of, of their religions or cultures or whatever. Everybody's just going to come together. They get to open a book at the end of it. So every child in that war that's going through, you know, their infusions and whatever they're going through at that time at the different right. hospitals will all get to have a book. Nice. So, yes she will continue to bring awareness. And that's something that's very dear and very pulling. It's pulling in my heart this year. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping that people will help donate the Mm -hmm. books. I will have those books delivered. They can, you know, um, 
hopefully my book will be out soon enough that I can do that. If not, obviously I have other books to donate yeah. and have other authors to help collaborate on this too as cool. well. Cool. I love it. So I want to transition into our speed round questions. And I love to use these speed round questions to just get just a little different view of who you are, what you're involved in, what inspires you, all of that. So I'm going to toss 10 questions at you and you can just tell me what comes to you in the moment. Sound good? Okay, let's do it. (laughs) Okay. All right. So who is your favorite or most iconic woman in history for you? If you had a moment or an hour to spend with that woman, who would that be for you? Oh my goodness. I just got chills from that. Probably not who you're going to, people might say Ellen Roosevelt or Maya. I'm going to say Astrid Lindgren. Okay. So if people who don't know who this is, she is a Swedish screenwriter, author okay. of Peppy Longstocking. Oh, Pippi's my favorite. My dog's name's Pippi. <laughs> Oh my God. She's my okay. Favorite. Is there a lot of messages there with her courage, her, yes. I mean, she was a, she was a feminist at her time. Let yes, me tell she you, was. talk about trailblazers. Yes. She really helped pave the road for many women Yes, and how they should act in yes. the stories that they could put out. And Peppy, her being a girl, a nine-year-old girl yeah. at that time and not a male, that was, that yeah. Was, yeah. So she, yeah. And she'll yes. give you the kapow if she needs to. Oh, yeah, to. she will. You yes. know, they told her, they, you know, she sent her books into different public publishers. And, you know, she wrote her little note is saying, please don't call the youth um, authorities because of the story. She wrote it for her daughter at the time who was very sick in bed. Mm. And her daughter was the one that came up with the name Peppy. But she wanted her mom to tell her a story about Peppy all the time. So she started to write. I love it. I would love to sit there and listen to her because I get, I started the same way. My child needed me to speak up and be a voice for so many others as she did for her child to bring happiness and to help her feel better. Yes. Need to sit with her and talk. Totally. Love, love, love. Oh, and I'm glad to know her name because I didn't even know Mm -hmm. that she was talented and Pippi and Lucy, as in I love Lucy. I mean, those are the things for me that inspired me to be who I am. So it's so great to hear you say her, her name. Excellent. So what's your favorite place that you've ever been to in the world? In the world? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. There's so many. I I can tell you, I find so many, uh, I have to say Spain. (gasps) No, really? Culture. This is love the Spain, be. love Spain, their, their, their culture, the music, their nightlife, their, uh, the food, just the warmth. Yeah. I love Spain. The very top of my bucket list is to live oh, the second, the second half of my life and <laughs> end my life. Eventually when I yes. die, be a resident of Valencia. Okay. Yeah. See, my, my mother was from Sevilla and we also mm-hmm. lived in Madrid. Okay. So love Spain. I actually danced to flamenco a little bit when I was a youngster. Wow. Look at you. I love that so much. Yay. All right. If you were given a million dollars and you had to give it to a charity, a charity, I have a feeling I know where it would go, but where would you give that million dollars? Just one. Yep. Oh my goodness. Well, this one is going to be saving lives. So I have to say, um, to the um, children for the pediatric um, oncology uh, cancer. Beautiful. Children to help them live. Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So do you have a favorite book? And if you're not a reader, do you have a favorite podcast? I don't need one of each, just one or the other. If you have a favorite book or a favorite podcast. Well, I'm looking at her. (laughs) Oh, you're so sweet. I mean, her story, look at you. Um, Peppy Longstocking. Because I can oh. resonate with her too as a character. Awesome. She's strong. She's courageous. She's she's magical. She has a horse that she has, and she has a a, a monkey she lives with. And yes, uh, as a child, who would want to just do what she did? Totally. I absolutely love Peppy. Love Actually, it. she's seventy five years old today. She's or, or be, now, I should say. Yeah, she's gonna be what? Seventy five years old. <gasps> oh, no kidding! Oh, I did not know that. That's great. Okay, it was written, I believe, in like nineteen forty five. I love it. Oh, all right. So what's a quirky or wacky fact about you that not a lot of people know? Mm. 
<laughs> gotcha. Well, I'm, I am silly. I, I talk to the characters for my books. That's how I develop their their characters. Yeah. I actually will talk to them. That's say, cool. hey, Chomper, how are you doing today? And see how she responds to me. Just like to see how I'm doing today. I'll say, hey, Carmen, how are you doing today? How are you feeling today? Yeah. I do that too. I have dreams. I dreamt of uh, the name um, Herman on Chomper, My Bird Dragon. I was dreaming about two lizards playing, going up and up. And I said, hey, hey, before I woke up, what's your name? Herman. I'm like, okay, that's it. Uncle Herman. I do stuff like that. That's, that's very cool. Oh, that's very cool. Okay. So if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Oh, gosh, superpower. Oh my gosh. To bring peace to this world, to um, help unite, to bring peace and in, in to unite, and to just have a little more love and warmth and understanding Absolutely. and patience in this. Yeah. Absolutely. Great mm -hmm. answer. What's your theme song when you walk on stage and you our New York Times international best-selling author and the world wants more Carmen. What are you strutting on stage to? Oh my gosh. Well, I love music of all kinds. I just love, love, love music. I, you know, I keep thinking about Kelly Clarkson when she won and she had that song that said a moment like this. Oh yes. That awesome. one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great one. Yes. And I remember that moment so clearly. Yes. And I had tears like, oh, totally. Look at what she just accomplished. And yeah, if I'm the, yes. And if I could have my children's program and know I'm walking on stage and, and being able to, to bring so much joy and love to all these children. Absolutely. absolutely. A moment like this. Yep. Great answer. What is one word that you would use to describe you? <sighs> compassionate. Mm. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. What is one thing that you want to accomplish before you're done on this journey of life? There's a lot I want to accomplish. And I honestly feel I am on that road by leaving a legacy already with my books. I will always have that message out there. I'm leaving that out there. I, before I leave this world, mm -hmm. I, I, I want a, I want a children's program. Mm. I, I, there's a lot of messages that I, my books have, and I think I want children's program. I do. I'm going to work towards that. That's my aspirations. I'm going to work for that. I want a children's program. I love it. I love it's it. It's going to be fun. That's what manifesting is all about, right? That's right. Keep writing. Mm -hmm. I think that's excellent. Carmen, I know people are going to want to know where to find you, how to get their hands on your books. I'm sure there are people listening and viewing right now that are thinking, oh my gosh, this re resonates so deeply in me. How can people find you, whether it's social media, websites, you know, where to find the book? What can you give us? I am on a lot of different social medias on Instagram. And I usually go by my name off uh, with maybe the, the title author in front of my name, mm -hmm. or you can go to my website, carmenswick.com. You can go to Amazon. You can go to Barnes and Noble. I love people to say, go to your local bookstores. Yes. Love to support local bookstores. And if they don't have the book, please request it. And more than likely they'll put it in. Also libraries, the same thing. If they don't have my books in there, they can do the same thing. They can go ahead and request it and get it in. I love it. And we'll make sure we put all of your details in the show notes so that people can find you easily with one click. And we'll make sure that all of that is listed, including the titles so that people can, yes, yes know exactly what they're looking for. So before we go, I want to make sure that I give a quick shout out to our sponsor, 100 Angels. They are transforming communities through service and education by providing comforts to, to populations in need through physical, emotional, spiritual care, health care, clothing, translation services, legal services, you name it. This is an extraordinary organization, and I encourage you to look up 100angels.org if you'd like to get involved. So Carmen, this has been such a pleasure. You are really a wonderful person. And I thank you for spending time with us here. 
thank you. That just got me. I don't know why I got so emotional, but thank you so much, Jen. You've been a blessing to have me here and to help showcase what I do and the love for the nonprofits. And just, just to say something real quick, we know there's a, a lot, a lot of worthy um, nonprofits organizations out there. These just happen to be a couple of mine. Love so. it. I love it. Well, everybody, we hope to see you tuning in next week. As you know, we put these out weekly and I am honored that you tuned in and Carmen, much love to you and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.